My name is Prince Moses Omar. I'm one of the greatest beneficiaries of the magnanimous nature and intelligence and the giftedness of Dr. Pastor Daniel Bula. You know, he has a special gift and talent and grace to talk into, to resuscitate even dying marriage, bringing them back to life. And just not just, it's not just bringing them back to life, but also adding flavor to marriages. It's a special ministry. Uh, Some times ago, I had a very difficult challenge, and it came to my aid. I don't know how I did it, but it worked like magic. Today, I'm enjoying my marriage. And uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you to his family. I also want to uh, key in. I'm keying in and in full support of this uh, marriage uh, a, a, a school that is bringing up. I will participate, I will also train, I will also ask my wife to participate and train also people that are around me and also enjoin them to participate. God bless you man of God, God bless your wife, God bless your children, God bless your ministry. Thank you. Let's go straight into today's class. Today we are going to be discussing something very important. Last week we established that before you go into marriage, before you contemplate marriage, in fact, while contemplating marriage, the first thing for you to consider is your purpose. You need to discover your purpose and also discover the purpose of the person that you want to settle down with. We, we discussed you know, on that topic extensively last week. But today, we want to switch over to character development for marriage. Character development for marriage. The truth is that there is a posture or a mindset that you can develop that will set an atmosphere for a happy, fruitful, progressive, blessed, and loving marriage. There is a posture. There is a character. There is a mindset and if you develop that mindset, if you develop that posture, if you develop that character, it will, you know, set the atmosphere for a very happy, fruitful, and progressive marriage. Very happy, fruitful, and progressive marriage. You know, so our focus study for today, our focus for today is Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, down to verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, down to verse 16. Matthew 5, 14, down to verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, down to verse 16. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill that cannot be hid. Verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16. The scripture says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is a posture, there is a character that once you develop that character, it will create an atmosphere for a very happy, prosperous, fruitful, and loving marriage. So let's, let's get into it. So Jesus said that you are the light of the world. I, I want you to reflect over that statement in a second. You, you are the light of the world. Literally, imagine darkness everywhere and then you come in as light. You are the light of the world. Jesus described you as a city 
that is set on a hill. A city that is set. What a wonderful declaration that was. What an amazing statement. <laughs> that you are the light. That you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. My God. Sometimes when we listen to, when we read scriptures like this and compare it with the situation, the current situations of our life, we begin to wonder, how come? Am I really a light like this in this my condition? <laughs> Am I really a light? Am I really a city on a hill in this my condition? We are going to be studying this scripture. And then, at the end of the day, you realize why many people are struggling and suffering in marriage. But as wonderful as that statement is, as wonderful as that scripture sounds, that experience of being a light, that experience of being a city on a hill, is not automatic. It's not automatic. You have to grow into becoming the light of the world. You have to grow into becoming a city that is set on the hill. It's not automatic. You know, some people just believe that once you get married, that's all. They just pay your diary, everything will fall into place. <laughs> there is a work dimension. There are things you must do. Marriage is not something you jump into. It's something you prepare to enter into. And unfortunately, many people do not prepare for marriage. Rather, all the attention is focused on the wedding. How they are going to kill cow? How many canopies? My wedding gown, my wedding dress, my wedding shoe, my this one, my my ladies in blue, ladies in red, ladies in, in, in purple, oh ladies in gold. All those things are amazing, it's beautiful, but it's not it. It's not it at all. In order for us to understand how to develop this character. In order for us to see how we can actually grow to a point where we become the light. Imagine that you are in your marriage, you are a light. Imagine when your marriage now becomes a light to other marriages. Imagine when your marriage is like a city that is set on high. But before your marriage is all of that, your life must become it first. Your life must become the light first. If your life is full of darkness, your marriage will be full of darkness. It is what you are that your marriage will become. So that's why we have to consider this issue of light and city on the hill very closely. And we are going to be considering it and examining it very closely. And there are three, three things about this city this particular city that is set on hill. Let's consider these three things that the Bible talked about. This city. Number one, the Bible says that this city is built. The city did not just appear from the blues. The city, pay attention, you, you, you can be so surprised that this is a marriage class. My God. <laughs> uh, the city we want to consider the three things about this city, as the Bible mentioned. Number one is that the city is built. The city did not just appear from the blues. It is built. The city here represents your life. If you build your life with the word of God, you will become like this city. In other words, when your life is centered around the word of God. When your life is centered around the word of God, you will become like this city. People want to get close to you. People just like you. Why? Because they can see the results that your life is producing. The good works that your life is producing. So, while you are planning to get married, the first thing to do when you have age, you feel like, oh, I am qualified to marry. Look for a Bible. 
look for a Bible. Get a Bible. Make sure that the Bible becomes your desk. You need to practically apply scriptures in your life, every area of your life. Every area of your life. Every area of your life. That is how to develop your life. You don't build your life based on past experiences of people. You don't build your life based on traditional norms. What people around your environment thinks or feel. You build your life on the word of God. So one of the things that qualifies a man for marriage is that this person over time have Develop himself. You can see through his life instances, events that was sharpened, that his life was sharpened via the world. You now understand why the Bible kicked against us marrying unbelievers. You understand why considering marrying somebody who is not grounded in the world is a serious mistake. The serious mistake. So both the man and the woman you want to marry develop yourself to a point where you 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 understand the world. The only constitution that binds marriage is the Bible. The only manual that binds, that guides the oppression, the things that should be done and should not be done in marriage is a scripture. So it's very important that you that you get close to the Bible. Get to know the scriptures. Don't just be a church attendee. Let us see that this scripture is, the Bible is, has become a part of you. So use the Bible to develop your life. How did you go through school? How did the Bible guide you when you were in secondary school? How did the Bible guide you when you, asked, when you started your business? How is the Bible guiding you in your business, day-to-day -day business transaction? That's what we are talking about. How is the Bible guiding you in making decisions in your life? How is the Bible guiding you? So until you use the Bible to develop yourself, that your life is built from scriptures, then I tell you, you are far away from enjoying a good marriage. You are far far away from enjoying a good marriage. One way to prepare for marriage is to build your life on the word of God. So you now understand that everything is not about prayer. And I'm praying for the will of God. I'm praying for the will of God. I'm praying for the will of God. I'm praying. I want God to reveal to me if he's the person. Why you are doing that? Do you know the God you are praying to? How has the word of God shaped your life? So consistently training your life, training yourself by the word of God will make you grow to a point where you become the word. Many, many marriages are struggling because two cities that was not built by the word of God came together in marriage. Remember that that book of Matthew we read, chapter 5 that we read, referred to you as a city. What that city, what is the, the material used to build that city is the word of God. 
So imagine a man who has not been built by the word and a woman that has not been built by the word coming together in marriage. That is a disaster. There is, there is no, there is no, there is surely going to be <laughs> serious problems. Serious problems. You know, that's why I have issues with all these marriage committees, you know, and some of the, some of the procedures that are created in church, pre-marriage counseling. Sometimes we just rush over very important things. We rush over it because already these two people want to marry. We want to make sure that the whole process goes smoothly for them. The reason why the committee is there is to ensure that that, that marriage, that plan can, can scatter. If it is not the will of God, if it is not the proper thing, if the man is not the right man, if the woman is not the right woman, Marriage committee, guide them to scatter that relationship. Guide them. But no, we will not do that. We will be diplomatic about it. We end up bringing a wrong man and a wrong woman together. We don't even take time to even study, to ask questions. Oga, are you even, are you even born again? What is the depth of the man in the word of God? If calamity comes to the family, can this man, does he have the spiritual understanding, the spiritual know-how, the spiritual intelligence to stand in the gap for his wife and his children that the devil cannot come in to attack them? Does he have what it takes? Does he know God to that extent that he can stand in the gap for his family? But all we ask, where do you work? Can you take care of your family? As if marriage is all about money. Marriage is not all about money. The very foundation for a happy marriage is the word of God, period. Once the word of God dwells richly in the man, and dwell richly in the woman. They, you don't need any marriage counseling. A man whose life has been guided by the world, even before he met the woman, you can see how his life, and as a, you can see a track record of what the world has done in his life. Not just being a church, there are a lot of people who are carrying Bible, even carrying title. Who do not practice the word? So you see, you look through, you can see these are things the marriage committees should consider. Does this man, does, has he grown in the word of God? Has he gotten to a point where he can use the word to defend his family? He can use the word to build finances for his family. He can use the word to provide leadership for his family. Has he gotten to that point? Many times we don't even ask questions. We don't check these things. We just say, well, there are two adults. They are ready for marriage. You have a good job. You have a good, you have a good apartment. What is the essence of living in a good apartment when the marriage is not good? It's better to be married into one room with a man whose life has been shaped by the word, the word of God in him and the blessing of marriage upon him can transform that marriage from a one room to a duplex. And we are waiting for a man who has arrived. The word of God, the word of God can transform any life. The word of God can transform. When the devil comes in that marriage, it is the word that the man will use. It is the word. It is the word that the man will use. 
Now, which word will he use when he doesn't know the word? <laughs> which word will he use? It's good. I was trying to say that all those ladies that are waiting for men who have arrived, I need a man who is very rich, who will take me out. No man will go through life and succeed without a woman somewhere. I have news for you. All those men have been taken. All those men, they have been taken. It's only in very rare occasions that you will see men like that who are still single. What you should be looking for is a man who has the word. Not just a man who quotes the Bible, but a man whose life has been shaped by the word. Whose life is controlled by the word. His thinking is controlled by the word. His, his, his actions controlled by the word. That's the kind of man you should settle down with. So, when you build your life with the word, it will help you in marriage. Because in the marriage, you will be manifesting the word. The Bible says that the city cannot be easily destroyed. The city cannot be easily destroyed. Paul said that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. What is, what is Christ? The word. When you use the word, when your life is all about the word of God, you will be at a level where no principality can touch you. So imagine a man who is word loaded, that the word of God dwells richly in him, and a woman who is also word loaded, that the word of God dwells richly in her. Both of them come together in marriage. There is no devil that can enter that home. There is no power from anywhere. Why? They are seated in heavenly places. The world has taken them to a realm where no devil can touch them. It's a realm where no principality can dare come close. So you see the importance of not just being a church goer. Is it, what, what, which church does he attend? You mentioned a popular church. Ah, that means he's a Christian. No. No. We should look beyond the church he attends. There are pastors who don't know the word. There are people who carry title about who don't know the word. So you need to check. He says he's a Christian. He's a pastor. He's a prophet. Check his life. Do you see signs of the manifestation of the word of God in his life, in her life? Once you are able to establish that, you cannot struggle in that marriage. Let's even assume that you married when you had nothing. In fact, the man does not even have mattress. What he has is a, a mat in his room. Doesn't even have, he's living in the face me and slap you kind of apartment. And he sleeps on a mat. He's one loaded. First of all, he cannot be one loaded and be at that level. <laughs> he cannot. So what has the word of God done in you? Is it just accept me the way I am? Or I cannot accept you the way you are. I've been born again for 15 years. I've been born again for 25 years. Where is the proof? Finally, number three. The city cannot be hidden. The city cannot be hidden. Because your life becomes a solution to so many people's problems, it becomes attractive. 
You cannot be one loaded as a woman, as a lady, and you will not become attractive to men. Because your life, your life will become a solution to problems. Every man wants a woman who can solve problems. Every man wants a woman that can solve problems. You are in church, you are active. You, they see the way you handle the children. They see the way you handle acti- a- assignments that are given to you. How you allow the word of God to manifest in your life? Every man will look for you. Every good thinking man will look for you. He is imagining how you are going to handle his children. He is imagining how you are going to handle his home. But a woman that is not word loaded is a problem to anybody. To any society. Just as a man who is not word loaded is a problem. You first of all be a problem to yourself, problem to anybody around you, problem to the church you attend. Because the word of God is going to shape every aspect of your life that you become a light. A light means that you become someone that is attractive. So I have taken time to talk about, you know, this city. I said, number one, that the city is built. Number two, that the city cannot be easily destroyed. So no devil can touch you. All those demonic attacks that you hear in marriage, go and check very well. These are men and women who are not loaded with the word. The word of God does not re- dwell richly in them. I will explain very soon. Very shortly, I'm going to explain to you so that you can see our we can see our nakedness and stop blaming witches and wizards. The reason why witches and wizards even have access to that room in the first place is because there was deficiency. They were not seated with Christ. They were seated with cultural norms. They were seated with advice from friends. They were seated with traditional, you know, with, with, with tradition, traditional ideology, secular mindset. And this opened the door for the devil to come in. So now I want to show you three dimensions how you can actually shine for this light and how it relates with marriage. So picture yourself in a marriage where the word of God becomes a standard. The word of God becomes a standard that guides the action of the man and the word of God becomes a standard that guides the action of the woman. Imagine that kind of marriage. Just imagine it. You can't have any problem. There can never be demonic attack in such marriage. There cannot be quarrels in such marriage. There cannot be incessant sickness in such marriage. There cannot be financial struggles in such marriage. So if the word is so important, how come, why then, why is it that we are not encouraging young people who are going into marriage, why are we not training them? Pastors, why are we not training young people? Why are we not pointing their their attention to the word? Why are we not being deliberate in mentoring them? To develop their lives, to solve their problems using the word of God. It's not enough to preach on the pulpit. The Bible says, Go ye into the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe. Teaching them to observe. I think. 
we need more of teachers, mentors now than just pastors who preach on the pulpit only on service days. We need to come down from that pulpit and see how to practically mentor people to building a life that is guided by the word of God. Practically. We need to do that. So how do we, I like the way the class is silent. I can't believe that this is a, a marriage class. Ah. So now explains, this explains why I am uncomfortable in many marriage seminars. You go to a marriage seminar, you'll be here, preach it, sir! Yay! Oh! Why are you people not shouting? Why are you not shouting? Oh! Preach it! Because the many marriage ministers have left the primary concern, the primary building blocks of marriage. And we are now focusing on the secondary. Let me ask a question. You are asked to study the temperament of your partner. To know whether your partner is sanguine, whether your partner is uh, choleric, whether your partner is uh, phlegmatic, oh, and, and so on and so forth. Now you know that this man is choleric. How will knowing that the person is choleric help you in the days of trouble. Even with the fact that you know you'll be so angry until you beat up that woman. Many marriage challenges stem out from the fact that we were taught rubbish. Absolute nonsense. Tell the man to cultivate his life. Develop his life based on the word of God. Let, let that man be subjected to the word. And let's see. So, we are saying, no. The major problem in marriage is sex. That's what we hear in marriage seminars. You need to give it to the man. Give it to the man. Give it to the man. They will be like, ah! Can I, let me shock you. <laughs> After all those give it to the man, give it to the man. When the man is still provoked, he will forget that he just had sex with you. There must be something higher that tames the person, that tames the woman, that tames the man. So because this other one is more practical, it takes a little more effort. What I'm sharing with you is so deep. It takes a little more effort for you to systematically and deliberately follow scriptures in every matter. So let's go to the application now. How do I shine this light? How do I become a city that is set on a hill? Number one, Engage prophetic declarations. Now you understand all the things that I've been saying since. You now understand what I meant. What that means is speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. 80% of people in church don't speak the word only. 80% of people in church. They don't speak the word only. They speak other things. They say what the economics are saying. They say what politicians are saying. They say what NTA is saying. They don't speak the word. What does it mean? Remember that the foundation, the background was that the man must be somebody who has been guided by the word in his life. And the woman should also be someone who is guided by the word. So when you now enter your marriage, what do you do? You continue to speak the word. You can't be speaking the word of God every day. And you will, your life will not begin to reflect the word. Let me give you a practical example. 
For instance, you see how many of us, how many of us have ever used this word? Gary have finished. How many of us have ever said it? Yeah, almost everybody. You know, everybody has said it, except me and, and my wife. Even Fedora, my baby girl, doesn't say that. Now, Gary have finished. Does it reflect the word? Does it reflect what the word of God says? I'm not hearing. I want to hear that answer. <laughs> I like this class. This class is you <laughs> know. Gary has finished. Does it reflect the mind of God? Is Gary supposed to finish in your house? Eh? Some of us don't know that he's not supposed to finish. Some of us are so used to Gary finishing. <laughs> My God. <laughs> he said, I will open unto you the floodgates of the heavens. And pour on you a blessing until there is no room to even keep it. Until there will be no want. Until there is nothing. In fact, you will have too much. Enough and to give out. Enough and to be a blessing to others. That is what the Bible says so. So when you wake up and say, Gary, I finish. Are you speaking the word? I want to hear you now. Yes, sir. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'm dead though? It's just a, a, a proclamation. I'm dead though. Maybe something happened. It's just, it has become a slam. I'm dead though. Hey, I'm dead. Have you heard something like that? Have you said it yourself? Before. <laughs> Some people are still saying it now, but they are not talking. You know, I like the way this class is quiet. Mm, I like it. I'm so excited. Because marriage class I used to attend, he does, I don't know. He did say, it. tell them all, tell them all. Really? Really? Why are you not shouting, tell them? Solid food belongs to mature people. You now understand with all the marriage seminars and marriage program and pre-wedding counseling and all the marriage committee, we, imagine the challenges and the problems that we have in marriage. And when you look at it, you discover that these people did not know. But they passed through a committee. They pass through processes in churches for them to get married. How come they were not told? How come they were not taught? Because we share the sharp things. The insignificant things of marriage. Those are the things we, we the ones that are exciting. But the major ones that has to deal with character development, we don't dare go there. And then people get into marriage and start struggling. And they start calling devil. Speak the word only. How will you speak the word only in marriage when you never spoke the word only when you were single? You see where I'm coming from? All this, my long, long talk. You see where I've landed now? How will you speak the word only in marriage when you have not spoken the word only when you were single? Gary used to finish in your house when you were single. Definitely is going to finish when, when you are married. As I'm talking to you now, some of us are trying to, you know, you are trying to, to imagine what I'm saying. You are trying to, you are trying to, you are struggling with what I'm saying. Like, it, for real? So Gary will not finish. <laughs> like, for real? So Gary? So, ah. It's not, ah. You see how we are struggling with the word, the word of God. So when we are talking about being loaded with the word, it's not just carrying Bible about and quoting it. I'm talking about when it is expressing in your life. 
is manifesting in your life. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Let me give you an instance. There are several instances. You know, I remember when my wife was pregnant and all the scan and the doctor's report were negative. They said a lot of things, they said a lot of things, they said a lot of things that should naturally send fear into a normal heart. In fact, it was already settled that my wife would deliver through seers. But you know what? I kept speaking the word. I kept speaking the word. I, I, I brought her into that realm of understanding that the word of God does not fail. One day, the church we were attending, we used to have what they call spiritual antenatal. And, you know, as a loving husband that I am, I, I, after service, I have to wait for my pregnant wife to attend the class, and then two of us will walk home together. And every day she comes out from the class, I ask her, what did they share today? And she will tell me, and we will talk about it. But on this faithful day, she came out and she said that they said the, the person that was handling the class that they was talking about CS. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with CS. It's, it's a, a medical advancement that, that has its own positive side. But it is not compulsory. It's not the perfect will of God. <laughs> if a woman can deliver normally, let her deliver normally. It's in fact, we thank God for that. But when you, your home is not a worded home, when your faith in the word of God has not grown to, an, to that extent, please take the mercy of God. That CS is the manifestation of the mercy of God for those who have not grown. I can say this anywhere. CS is not the perfect will of God. If it happens, it is, you know, it, it is as a result of your level. And humble yourself and accept your level. And me now, I cannot criticize you at your level. That's your level. And I, I celebrate you, I honor you at that level. But please, Never you stand at that level to say that is the will of God. That's how it should be. No. Because even mad women who don't go for atinatal, who don't take fruit, who eat from the gutters, they don't, they don't even go for any medical checkup. They deliver safely without midwives. All through the scriptures, the scriptures have given us example of even old women who delivered safely. So don't buy that idea of the devil that, you know, it, it, there's nothing. I don't have a problem with medical science. But medical science cannot replace my belief in the world. Never. So when the doctor, and then that day we came out and the woman was trying to advocate for seers. And I told my wife, that's the end you are attending that class. We went back and we talked about it. We talked. I have to knock that CS mentality out of, out of our head. Using the word of God. Imagine that I was a man who was not loaded in the word. I did not believe the word. I didn't have faith in the word. There is no way my wife couldn't have been delivered through CS. There is no way. Because we held on to the word. We spoke the word only. The day came. Not even the expected day of delivery. Jehovah Omadu decided to show himself. He <laughs> said, you people believe me? I will show myself. On that day, I still remember, I just bought a new television set. We were trying to tune it. While we were tuning our new device, <laughs> looking for channel, we were excited. Water broke. Boom. Guess what? It was not on the expected day of delivery. It was the eighth month of the pregnancy. 
water broke. I took my wife to the hospital. And the doctor saw her. I said, no, no, I will, she will be fine. I will see her tomorrow. It's not time. It's not time. It's just uh, this one, that one. <laughs> Don't joke with God and his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word remains forever. Hmm. Do you know what God did? God ensured that all the doctors that examined and brought out all these negative reports were not on duty. Even the head doctor saw her and said, keep her, I will see her tomorrow morning. He left that night. And God brought a matron all the way from Calabar. She only visited once in a while. And that day was the day she eventually visited. Hey! <laughs> the woman came. I believe she didn't even have an understanding of the background, the history, and all those reports. My wife was in labor. She took my wife into the theater. And, ma? I mean, labor room, sorry. <laughs> Took her into the labor room. <laughs> and because we don't know the difference. <laughs> Took her into the labor room. Or I like to call it favor room. Mm -hmm. Carried her inside favor room. The result was a beautiful, bouncing baby girl. By the time the doctor came back the, mo the following morning, he was shocked to see the baby. And it was not all those things they said would happen. This baby was delivered safely, normally, to the glory of God. Do you know how we won that battle? By the word. By the word. So picture your, yourself now. In your marriage, faced with that kind of situation, with a man who is so confused, all that he does is believe what the doctor says. He doesn't know the word. He has not seen and tested the practicality of the word of God in his life. The woman is in danger. I can go on and on to give you instances where we stood by the word and God came through for us. God came through. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Engage prophetic declaration. Stop talking about your situation. I know you are in one room. I know you are drinking Gary. With that Gary, can you speak the word? The Bible said the set time to favor has come. Wake up and say, my time has come. Walk into that interview room and say, my time has come. I get my employment. To the glory of God, I will be employed. This is my last interview. I mean, you can't carry that kind of aroma inside an interview room and not be favored. But you are entering there and mm, what are my village people? Mm, they will allow me to get a job. Mm, 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 mm. There are times when my wife will turn to me because that's what the man should be doing. The man is supposed to be a pillar. Women are emotional beings, we know. So when things happen, she turns to the man. What she's looking for is not that you two should break down with her and say, hey, you know, and all of that. She needs a man who will stand. How will you stand? On what will you stand on? Are you going to stand by your village mentality? Or you are going to stand on the word of God? Do you know the word? What does the word say about finances? What does the Bible say about finances? And how does what the Bible says about finances, how has it shaped your financial life? What results have you gotten by applying what the Bible says about finances? You end up marrying a man who doesn't believe the word of God on finances. Every single problem, he will borrow money. He will go and collect loan. Because he feels that the next thing you should do is to collect loan to solve your problem. Is that what the Bible says? 
What does the Bible say? You shall lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow. The evidence of the blessing of God on your life as a child of God is that you do not borrow. The Bible says that the borrower is what? Is a slave, is a servant to the lender. Is that the status you like? <laughs> the, 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 the borrower is a servant to the lender. Why don't you say, I want to be the one lending? I don't want to be the one borrowing. But a man who doesn't believe God, who doesn't have an understanding of the word of God concerning finance, will drag you into a marriage where you will struggle. Because every little thing he will borrow. And the more you borrow, the more you go into poverty. I have never seen anyone who has borrowed himself, borrowed into wealth. No. I know financial... Um, Secular thoughts, school of thoughts, will tell us there are there are good good debt and bad debt, good good debt and bad debt. I don't care what the financial institutions are teaching. I only believe what the Bible says. At one point in in our marriage, the first few years of our first I think first year. We were indebted. We had debt. One day I said, no, this cannot be. We wrote down all the people who were owing money and the money that we were owing them and the total. We pasted it on the wall of the room. Every morning, I'll pray over it. I'll pray over it. I'll pray over it. And before we know it, God began to open doors for us. God began to make room for us. We cleared up those things. Today we are not owing anybody. We are not owing anybody. And it's so sweet for you to sleep without when you know you are not owing anybody. Now, how did we change that financial situation? We use the word of God. We use the word of God. Number two way to manifest the light of God is to manifest the word. The other one is speaking the word. You speak the word. Now you get to a point where you become the word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. In John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It was in the beginning with God. If you go down to verse 14, the Bible says, And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The spoken word, let there be light and there was light. Let there be this and, and, it, and it happened. Let the waters come together, it happened. That spoken word of God became flesh and dwelt among men and became visible. This is another dimension. What I'm sharing with you is, is, is very deep. And I pray that the Holy Spirit grant you understanding. <laughs> he became the word. So, so now. The man you want to marry, has he become the word? Has he become the word? If you want to make decisions or you want to do something, can you look at his life and see it just at work? Because when he enters marriage, is the same. A bad single person will become a bad husband or a bad wife. Marriage does not have magic, magical powers to change people overnight. No. No. So you are doing yourself much favor looking for somebody who is rooted in the world. The person who speaks the word. And then somebody who has become the word. Who has become the word. When your neighbors look at you, what do they see? Do they see another Christian, another noisemaker that don't allow them to sleep every night, making no bra 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 bra? And yet, the next voice they are hearing is you abusing your husband, 
washing him with sarcasm from head to toe, calling him all manner of names. You, it cannot be an action guided by the word. Your neighbors are hearing how you are beating your wife. You are beating her. Pastor. Pastor. Tomorrow you carry Bible. You are going for evangelism. If you near my door. If you near my door. You must you come to a point where your neighbors can have confidence in you. They can have confidence in you. They say, no. Let me, you are so bad that even your neighbors cannot leave their children with you. They don't trust you. <laughs> they don't trust you. And, and you are what? A Christian. Ah, no, 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 no. That's the man you want to marry. <laughs> That's, that's the woman you want to marry. Everybody knows her. The other day, that's how she wore nika. Came out. Said, today you will see me. That's your wife to be. No woman loaded by the word of God will stand to exchange words with her husband. No woman. No woman. No woman. So you, you are just a church goer. Just accept your, your situation. The problem with us in church is that we claim holiness when we are not. We can no, no, you know me. Even if Christ come now, drop and blow now, I'll be the first to go. We claim what we are not. I know, I know. Just understand your situation. Take it. And work on it. Work on it. Every little thing, you, before you know you are carrying a subject, you are carrying matches, you are, ah, uh, ah. Uh, that's the man you want to marry. He's carrying matches, you are not married to him yet. As a single man, he's carrying matches. You think in marriage he will be carrying, he will carry a Bible. <laughs> Recently, we heard how a man came back, the wife did not prepare food. Entered the house, brought her the gun and shot the woman's hand. The, wo the hand was amputated. The man now is in prison. That would have been, that would have been avoided if the woman heard this thing that I'm sharing with you now. If the so-called church committee, marriage committee, had done what they were supposed to do. Scream the man. And call the sister and say, sister. Think again, though. this man is not it. Even though there are some people, even when church said, think again. This man is not, they still, their head is still there. They will still go ahead, disobeying the church. And still go ahead to marry the man. When they now have a problem, they run to church. Not me, I will even answer you. Is your cross bear it. That is what you love. That is what you that's your man. Enjoy him. Because out of all the millions of men in the world, it was this market carrier you went after. Now you have married him, you can't put your head down for him. You did not know that he will become your head in marriage. So why couldn't you choose your head wisely? Why couldn't you choose your head wisely? Why? You had a choice to choose your head wisely. You refuse. You say, is this knock head you want to marry? You have married the knock head now. You will not allow us to rest. So before you enter, check, this is what you should be checking. Check this one. Check him, man. Check, check. Yeah, he's prophet, prophet. His eyes are open, he sees everything. He can tell you what you heard yesterday. Does he have the word of God in him? Does he manifest the word of God? He has not even come to see your father. He's already, his hands are going to places he's not supposed to go. 
Eh? He's touching you from head to toe. And he's going to wrong, wrong places in your body. Eh? And you still went ahead. A Christian that is not restrained. You know, when a man and a woman come together, especially those ones who love themselves, body chemistry will begin to react. But there should be a level of restraint. You know that this person, even though he's feeling like, but he's still holding body. Why? There is a fear of God in him. But no, you're all there for where? He's even telling you, you don't love me. Say, so why now? You know I love you. Say, so if you love me, maybe you, you sleep with me. And that's how to prove that you love me. And that's the man you want to marry. Guess what? Some weeks ago, a, a lady called me and said, all the Christian brothers that are coming to ask her hand in marriage are demanding to sleep with her first. All. What a shame. And I told her, none of them are qualified. None of them are qualified. You end up with any one of them, you will be shooting yourself by yourself. In fact, you are pulling the trigger by yourself. It's a clear signal that that's not the person you should marry. A man who loves you will wait. His body is doing him, tinini, tinini. He will even show you that his body is doing tinini, tinini, but he will still struggle to hold himself. It's like, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Finally, because I know you have questions. I'm, I'm ready to take your questions. Finally, you now move from the point where you act the word to becoming, living a life of supernatural existence. The life of supernatural existence is that you carry the glory cloud everywhere you go. You carry the glory cloud. The presence of God is with you everywhere you go. Imagine you marry that kind of man. Ew. Imagine you marry that kind of sister. I'm not talking about chorus leader in church. I'm not talking about prayer warrior in church. I'm talking about a man who speaks the word only. A sister who speaks the word only. A brother who manifests the word. You can see the word of God in his actions. You can see the word of God in the sister's actions. And then, when you speak the word, when you act the word, you will now enter a reign of supernatural existence where anybody can contact God just being around you. Anybody can contact God. You know, one day a woman ran into my house with a dying baby. The baby was, you know, going. I collected the baby from her, put the baby on my bosom. I walk around my sitting room. I did not say a word. I was just walking around with the baby on my bosom. For like five minutes, I handed the baby back to the mother. I said, go and feed her. And the baby was instantly healed without a word. What happened was that the baby contacted something. There was something on me that drove away what was on the baby. One time like that, some ladies came and knocked on my door violently in the night. You know all those, uh, all those babes that even when you go for evangelism, they will be, they will be, they will be cursing you. I said, Pastor, Pastor, maybe you will define. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. All those girls on the street that used to yap, used to yap us when we go for evangelism. One day, one of they came, they banged on my door. I opened. You know them now. All these are our Ron's sisters, Ron girls. They call them Ron's girls. They exposed themselves to all manner of danger. I opened the door. For the first time, they greeted me. See. Carry something on your head. <laughs> uh, I opened the door. They said, sir, please, so one of them had this spiritual attack that she would be smelling dead body, smelling dead things. And she was also smelling. She didn't know where she got it from. And they said, sir, please pray for us. 
I said, okay, no problem, come in. I told three of them to come into the place. I prepared a place for them to sleep. I went inside the inner room to sleep. I locked my door because you can't tell. <laughs> I prepared a place in the parlor for them. And I entered the inner room, I locked my door. Because you cannot tell. Hmm. So they were shocked that I did not even pray. By morning, I opened the door and came out. Around, by 8 o'clock, the lady that could not be, she was not sleeping. Every night she was tormented. She slept so sound that night. We, were, we had to wake her up. Wake up. They asked me, what happened? I said, are you ready to accept Jesus now? Jesus in this house did not allow the demons that afflicted her to manifest here. So, now imagine that you married a man who carried the glory of God on his head. And a woman who carries the glory, two glory carriers coming together in marriage. Imagine how that marriage will be. We have seen supernatural manifestation of God's glory in this marriage. Is it, how do you explain building a house? Building a house without savings, without owing, without borrowing. Build, we built our house supernaturally. Even we cannot explain it. How do you explain that? How can two Christians, and, and, and I need answers, how can two believers come into marriage? Marriage itself is a system of, is a spiritual system of help. God created marriage to help mankind. The anointing of favor is on marriage. The anointing of blessing is on marriage. How then do you explain how two Christians come together in marriage and they are struggling financially? This is what is lacking. The word of God is lacking. They don't believe the word. They don't act the, law, the word. They don't speak the word. They don't manifest the word. Therefore, the glory of the word cannot come upon their marriage. They are struggling. Time will fail. I can give you instances, instances of how the glory cloud came through for us in our marriage. So I'm not telling you something that, uh, you know, and I'm not even somebody that knows how to pretend. My wife knows me. You, you, you cannot be frowning with me in the house and come and be smiling with me outside. Of, I will smile with you. <laughs> I will not. You know, I don't understand. Where did we learn that from? Something is going wrong in your marriage, you are pretending. So that people will not know. But you are suffering. Even get to a point where you can't even tell people of authority. You can't talk to your pastor about it. Say, no, we don't want third party in our marriage. Listen to me. Every sick person needs a doctor. But you don't have any business with a doctor when you are not sick. If your marriage is sick, look for help. Stop suffering in silence. I, I cannot come now and start telling you, oh, you know, we are so happy when we are not happy. No, me, I will say it. <laughs> I will say it. So that if something is wrong, let's seek for help. Let's find help. But honestly, we are, I am thankful to God for the kind of wife that God gave to me. And I'm sure that my wife is also grateful to God for the kind of husband that you know, God gave to her. When you get to a point where you cannot submit yourself to the word of God, who will you submit to? You can't come together and say, okay, ah, this is what the Bible says. Okay, let me practice what the Bible says. He said, no, I'm the head. You must bow to me, I'm your Lord. The Bible says that the husband should love the wife and do what? As, no, love the wife as Christ loved the church. And 
and did what? And gave himself. Gave himself. Answer my question or I need answer. Now, the Bible also says that the woman is to be help meet to the husband. Right? So, that means the primary person who is supposed to do things is the husband, Abi. Why the woman support three of us? Shout it, let me hear. Who is supposed to wash plates? Say, it, let me hear. Who is supposed to wash clothes? Who is supposed to sweep? You people are not answering me. I want to hear now. Who is supposed to wash clothes? Who is supposed to wash plates? Who is supposed to cook food? Who is supposed to go to the market? The wife do what? Support. Do you understand? I hope we are seeing our nakedness. We are seeing, we are seeing where the problem is in the marriage. The Bible never said in any way from Genesis to Revelation that the man is the head of the marriage. The Bible never says so. The Bible only said that the, the man is the head of his wife. So who is the head of the marriage? God. The marriage is owned by God, not by the man. So the man is the, the God is the CEO of the marriage institution. The man is the MD, while the wife is the manager. <laughs> so you see. So you now sit down as Lord. You are supposed to be a servant leader. Jesus gathered with his disciples, and somebody was supposed to wash their feet. And all of them were waiting because they had that lordship mentality. I am superior to this one. I'm superior to that one. Andrew, you are supposed to wash my feet. Don't you know I'm Peter? Jesus stood up and took the, the, the bucket, poured water, and started washing their feet. Is there anyone that wants to be a leader among you? Must do what? Be the servant. That's what the Bible says. So, on what grounds does the husband have in marriage to be loved? Even though the wife treats him as her king. You, you, you see Bible? The man presents himself as a servant leader. The woman presents, treats him as her king. Tell me, if your marriage is like that, wouldn't you like it? Answer me now. Women, answer me. So, so what exactly are we, are we doing? Let's go back to the basis. Let's go back to the foundation and stop all this drama, you know. I get so angry when I attend marriage seminar and people are shouting nonsense. They are shouting rubbish. Tell them the truth and they'll be quiet. Tell them the truth. Let me tell you, God has blessed me and he will keep blessing me. Even to the point where I start flying private jets around the world, I will still enter market and buy things for my wife. I will still enter the kitchen and cook. I was cooking when we had nothing. God has blessed us at this level. I'm still cooking. I know a time will come that I'll be very busy. I'll be handling <laughs> now the, 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 the ministry, you know. People will say, no, it's not when the ministry grow. Ministry cannot grow to a point where I cannot cook for my wife. That kind of ministry does not exist. That kind of ministry does not exist. If Pastor Paul and Nature at that level still enter teaching once in a while. Which other big ministry are we going to? That's the definition of a big ministry. At that level. And you, 
carpenter that have not even started nothing, nothing. When she come, she come you don't have. Nothing. If they turn you upside down, 50 cobble cannot fall down. You find it so difficult, you will sit down. The, the woman should, 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 should lie down as carpet. You put your leg on her. But I don't blame the men because you were so naive and ignorant to go into such a marriage in the first place. Why am I acting the way I'm acting? I understand scriptures. I am acting scriptures. So the compass for the marriage is not what any pastor is preaching on earth. It's what the Bible says. Period. Eight years now, we have not used any devotional. Any devotional written by any pastor in this marriage. Our devotional is the Bible. And my wife and I, we have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation together. Together. So, and now we have started again. We are now in the book of Psalms. We have read from Genesis. We are now in Psalms. We will continue. When we finish, when we get to Revelation, we go back again to Genesis. We will read again. Until we get to revelation, we keep doing like that till Jesus comes or we meet with Christ. Because the word of God becomes the foundation for marriage. If you must enjoy your marriage, you must know the word, speak the word, act the word. Period. Anything short of that. I don't know what book you are reading. If you like, read whatever book. Temperament book. Spirit control temperament. Whatever. I am not trying to bring down anybody's book, but for me, all those things are secondary. Before you read such book, read Bible first. Understand what the Bible says about marriage first. If you take this and practice it, I tell you, you are heading into a, a, a sweet, sugar, sugarlicious, honey, Swimming marriage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Guy, my God, see class. I like the way everybody is quiet. Everybody is gentle. I like it. So, now, I don't know, probably if we have the time next class, I'll begin to teach you step-by-step -step things that you are supposed to do, practical things you are supposed to do that will help you to live by the word. If you do this as a single person, first and foremost, your life will be transformed. That struggle will end. You can't know the word, speak the word, and act the word as this struggle. It's not possible. Even if all the witches and wizards in your village, they gathered on your matter, it is not possible. It's not possible. If there is anybody the devil should attack, is me. Because I enter everywhere. I set people free. I hear pastors say they preached somewhere and they went home and there was an attack. I said, what? Attack what? How? How can you be seated with Christ in heavenly places and far above principalities and power and these principalities now attack you? How? So that means something is wrong somewhere. It's possible that you are not truly seated with Christ. There are openings in your life that are not being covered by the word. Let us tell ourselves the truth and stop walking about as if marriage is so complex. Some people will start saying marriage is like Peter Leaf. You know, sometimes it's sweet, sometimes it's bitter. All those all those things. Let us tell ourselves the truth. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's come back to the basis. And let's trust God to help us with grace. That we, as we read the word, we understand it. And as we practice it, you can't practice the word and be so struggling. It's not possible. Anybody that is suffering in life, the word of God is not active in that person's life. Qu quote me anywhere. Quote me anywhere. I came back to you in 2014 with my bags full of books, no money, no money. I didn't know anybody, no connection, nothing. In 2014, 
And in December 2015, we got married. So where did I get money for the wedding? I didn't come back with anything. I got married to a very beautiful queen. Very beautiful. Blessed. Anointed. Loaded. Humble. Think of anything you can even imagine. Teachable. What made that possible? The word of God. It is the word that activates the glory. You can't expect the glory of God when your life is not acting the word. And then, with nothing, we got married. With nothing, we lived together. With nothing, I think the first three years of our marriage, we had built our house. With nothing. I didn't come here. If, if, if it did not work, I won't do marriage school. If it did not work, I won't do marriage school. I'm not that kind of person. So I'm not sharing things that... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Is left for anybody who wants to practice it. And I've not seen people who practice it that, that, that it has failed. If you are practicing the word and it failed, it's not the word. Maybe it's something else you are practicing. All right. So I want to take a pause here now. And if you are watching us on YouTube, kindly share this video to reach out to many people who would definitely be blessed. Share, like and um, comment on this video. We want to get feedback from you. Uh, reach out to us. We're always here to assist you anyway. They study the word, the speed, the act. But when it gets to in terms of marriage, okay, that was when, when they were not yet married, when they eventually got married. Everything changed. They prepared, they, they came back to their normal selves. I think they were just preparing just for the marriage, just to get the girl attention. So in that aspect, what are we to do? Okay, first and foremost, they were not acting the word. They were not speaking the word. They were just being religious. Like, for instance, I just gave you an example now. All of us, everybody here used to say, Gary, finish. Sugar, finish. Salt, finish. This one finished. So the woman was ignorant. You, that person that you are talking about cannot play that nonsense with me. Because I, I will catch you right there. <laughs> so that's why you two have to be grounded. To know. You, two, you have to be grounded. Let me tell you. The prophet that bath women in the name of deliverance. Don't they preach the word? Is it demonic book they used to preach on their pulpit? Is it not Bible they open? But how can you preach Bible and bath a naked woman? It doesn't tally. So you cannot tell me that there will not be clues to know that there is something that is not adding up about this man. But let me tell you the truth. Many women close their eyes to it. Many women close their eyes to it. Because what? They are in love. That's why we advise. Before you say yes, bring the man. <laughs> bring the man. There are things we will ask him that you cannot ask him. There are things we can see through that you cannot see through. And when those advice come, please act on it. Don't throw it away. I say it's my decision. I've made my decision. When you start crying now, it will not look as if God is the one that gave you a wrong husband. For your information, God does not give anybody wife or husband. Is a personal choice. It's a personal choice. So, to answer your question, nobody can pretend with the word. I have said it here. 
as a single person, before you agree to marry him, have you seen instances in his life that the word manifested? That you saw, oh, because this person is a word person, is a, is a word loaded person. You will see it even in his day to day activities how the word of God plays out in his life. You know what? My wife did not know me as a pastor when we married. She knew me as a pastor before we were married. Before we were married. So during that courtship time, there should be evidence and signs to know that no, this person is a child of God. But what do we do? We cover up a lot of things. Cover it, cover it, cover it, cover it. Because of love. And then, because of desperation. I have seen women that even they tell them, this man is not good. He said, that's the way I want to marry. So nobody can pretend with the word. Because you can't pretend, like, you can't pretend with the word and get results. It's very practical. Okay, you are speaking in tongues. You are quoting Bible. You are a very strong man, a man of God. You are even a prophet and a seer. How come your life is like this? You can't be all of that and not, there is no evidence. The word of God is, is action driven. It's not theory, it's practical. It's a give and take thing. If you do this, I will do this. That's what the Bible says. If you do this, I will do this. If you do this, I will do this. So, in other words, if you do it and you don't see the path that God said he will do, that means God is a liar and God can never lie. So the problem basically is with the women who are sometimes very naive, sometimes desperate. They will not sit down to examine the man they want to give their life to. They want to hand over their entire existence. It's like interview. You must interview the man. You are now the one employing. You are the woman. You are the one employing the man because when he marries you, you have to submit to him. He becomes your head. So interview him. Get panel of judges. My wife carried me from Uyo. We came to this calabar to meet one of her um, cousins like that. That, uh, that, was, that is a pastor. I came, the man told her to step aside. The man started asking me questions. Asking me questions. Asking me questions. But no, you will not. To even allow the man to come and see pastor. No. So that pastor will not spoil things for you. Pastor will not spoil things. I love him, I love him, I hate I love him like that. He will come, he will change, he will change. He will change, he will change. I had to travel down to see the man. The man asks questions and all of that. You know, all those processes are important. If the man honor you enough, he will open himself for those cross examination. If the man truly love you, he will want to go through the fire to get you. But no, many women shield the men. You cover it. Even church will give you books to go and read. The woman will go and read her own, and read the man's own, summarize her own, summarize for the man, and submit the project to the church. Put the man's name, but the project was written by the woman. Now when she enters the marriage, it is now time for the man to manifest what was written in the book. <laughs> The man cannot manifest it because he never read the book. And the woman, you are expecting the man to manifest it. But you shielded him from, from. So allow that time he's eager. He wants to have you. Allow that process to go through. In the middle of the process, I remember the day I met my, past, my wife's pastor. The man is a professor. Experienced pastor. The man asked me a question. Hey, he's like horse seat. The man asked me questions. Do you know what? 
One thing I learned from that man's question is that the, even the things I thought I know, I didn't know anything. I didn't know. So it got to a point I had to tell the man. I said, please, sir. I have come here for you to help me. If there is anything you are seeing or the Holy Spirit is telling you or your spirit is not comfortable with this relationship, please, sir, tell me now. I will end it here and now. And I meant it. But many of us are not sincere. We are not. We are not sincere. You want to cover things, cover things. You will seek help at that time. When you now enter marriage, the whole thing will blow up. You say, hey, see my life, see where I ended. What will that your cry do? Speak out though. Allow the man and the woman to go through the process. Allow it. We can't be having marriage school like this and somebody will be in this church and you want to marry and you are not attending the marriage school and you want me to come and join you. It will never happen. I cannot join because I don't want to hear midnight calls. Pastor, you have broken my head. Oh, you have broken my head. <laughs> I don't join people who break people's head. Oh. I will scatter the relationship before it starts. I will scatter it. Let us learn to scatter relationships. He said, no, as a pastor, you don't scatter me, I scatter. Let me scatter it. If you like, fight me. If you like, squeeze your face. I stand for the truth. Truth cannot be covered. The Bible said that the truth will make you free. So that's just the problem. Pretense, 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 pretense. Even some of the women even know that the man is deficient in certain areas. People, they keep quiet. Why don't you go to pastor and say, pastor, I have observed this about this man. Please, we need help. And some men, when they go to tell pastor, like, you say, hey, he went to report me to pastor. Are you okay? Do you want to still continue like this? Can't you see how struggling your life is? Sometimes people don't evaluate themselves and discover that at your age there are certain things that should happen. But because of your lifestyle and the way you are, even people that should help you cannot help you because of your lifestyle. Now this woman has come and observed this thing and told pastor, you are beating her. And you, they have not married you, they are beating you. You are still going ahead. And you now expect him to go and change a marriage. Ma, let me put it to you that that man did not change in the marriage. The man was the same person before the marriage. It's just that the woman refused. She just made excuses. Please don't make excuses. Speak, speak, speak. I'm here. Come and tell me. Immediately I will swing into action. Let us set those matters so that the man can be helped. Some men need psychiatry examination. They are, they are psychological defects. You are angry with a woman, you are carrying something to hit the woman. Is that not madness? That's madness now. You need to be examined. Now you that they are carrying something to hit you, you keep your mouth, good bad luck. How will me, pastor, that I'm praying for the whole world, praying for people in, uh, in, uh, in every... You think the Holy Spirit would? Some of us, the Holy Spirit will even reveal it to me. I will call you. He said, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Be fine. I pray that you stay fine. Continue to be fine. I beg you in the name of God. Anything that you are uncomfortable with during the courtship, speak out. Speak out. So that, it's not as if when you speak out, like I will try to help personally, I'll try to help. So that we can take the man through. Let's see, one couple like that, both of them were, is it SS or AS? AS. A -A -S. The woman was AS, the man was AS. They said they are believing God. They are believing God. Okay. Believe God now that you are not married. Let it change to AA. Let at least one of the genotypes change to AA. It's not that you now enter marriage. You now start giving birth to sickness. 
You start crying to God, oh God, help us. Is it by force that you must marry that particular person? If God is telling you to marry that person, God is going to change that thing. God is not an author of confusion. But people throw themselves into lion den. When they enter, they say, I did not know. I put it to you that you knew. You knew. <laughs> there is no, if you sit down very well, even you will be, you will remember some people who talk. Sometimes, even when you had revelations, and you should not marry this man. You see, when I now in the marriage, now you, you expect miracle to happen. It doesn't happen. Question? Question. We have five minutes to go before I give you the assignment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you speak with a positive word, and then at the time you realize that you spoke in a negative word. And the main thing you now say, no, we say, God has finished. Oh, God has not finished. What is there any remedy to that? Yes. I want you to understand one thing. What you speak, angels speak, and God fix. When you declare positive things, you are releasing positive energy into the, the environment of your life, the atmosphere of your life. When you speak negative things, you are also declare, you are releasing negative charges, which demons will use it to afflict you. So when you find yourself making a negative pronouncement, you can as well correct it. Correct it immediately. The same way you said it, say again. And practice not to be saying it. Practice not to be saying it. In fact, when, when, when I am very conscious of the environment of my, I, I, of my house, I hate people squeezing face around my house. There are certain words that must not be uttered in that house. I have practically stopped people from coming to my house because of that. When they come, they talk anyhow. You don't talk anyhow in my house. There are angels around. So what you say, you will empower them. What you say can send them away. Many of us have sent angels out of our houses. Because every time you are fighting your husband, children will do something. Instead of you to correct the child, what the child has done, you begin to re release negative words. You begin to release negative words. You begin to release negative, and you are praying to God to help you. Whereas you are the one, you see, you are the only witch of your life. So, do not joke with what I have shared with you today. Don't joke with it. It will, it will transform your life. Now, let me give you the assignment because of time. Get a Bible. Read a chapter a day. Start from Genesis chapter 1. So between now and the next class, each chapter that you read, write out your comments, the things that you learn. When you come to the next class, that is next Friday, you are going to read chapter by chapter. Chap Genesis chapter 1, this is what I learned. Genesis chapter 2, this is what I learned. Genesis chapter 3, this is what I learned. Do you know I visited one family, they don't have Bible? I say, yeah. And they are spending money. They are buying books for children. This one that school has resumed, they have bought books for their children. But no Bible in their house. No wonder the devil is dealing with those people. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are going to start. That is the beginning of your journey to reading the entire Bible. You are not qualified, you are not yet a Christian until you have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's just like you jumping inside a, a car and you don't know how to drive. You just enter. Brum, 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 you will be jamming people up and down. That's what we have been doing. You just jump into the vehicle of Christianity and that's why you have been jamming yourself up and down because the manual that guides us in life as Christians 
You don't know what the manual says. So let's start from Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Read a chapter a day. Some of us have time, you can read three chapters if you can. Amen. Just read a chapter a day. And then, that is it. By next Friday, that should be seven days now. That should be seven days. Abi? So at least you should have read seven chapters. From Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 7. All of us will talk about what we learn. Then you will now understand that, eh? So all this my problem was inside this Bible and I did not know. All the solution to my problem was inside this book and I did not know. Let me tell you, even if you are sick, the solution is in the Bible. It's not with the prophet. There are scriptures that you will read, that sickness will disappear. I tell you. One verse, one verse, yeah, is gone. Poverty, poverty. The antidote is inside the Bible. So, that's your assignment. Go back. Go back and carry your Bible again. Some of us only carry it on Sunday when we are coming to church. We clean the dust. Eh? You are supposed to be reading it every day. You're supposed to be reading it every day. Hallelujah. The Lord will help 